okay so it went live now ha huh. so you were asking for the difference between uh, test data set uh, training data set and validation data set right yeah so if you have like for example you build a model okay and you build a model uh, maybe it's a classifier okay some so, basic uh, when we say build a model that is just a function with the parameters right correct build yeah it's a, just a function and you are giving some input and that function is giving you some output okay like so how do we know like the what coefficient to put and uh, whether do, to do plus or minus or divide or like like okay. how is so, that so hmm. so if like for example you want to build a linear regression okay so you want to build a linear regression model so linear regression is what it will start finding some straight line okay it will start finding a straight line that should suits your data set whatever you have given so you will be giving some training data right to learn to build a model because okay. whatever the model that will be built that will be built on your whatever the data you are providing okay so whatever okay. the data you are providing so it will start finding a straight line that should fit your data set okay okay, okay. so it will start finding a straight line so it's if you are finding a linear regression it will start a straight line sort of things okay if if you are just uh, finding a linear regression not even a polynomial like just a linear in one degree so it will start finding a straight line that should where it will start finding a straight line and you'll be giving you'll be like it will start finding a straight line okay and then it should like it's, it's like possible that it will not suits up like it will not fit your all data set whatever you are providing right some data can be uh, for sure that the, the whole data will not lie on that straight line whatever the straight line will be like whatever the model you have built like you, you got one function okay and you are pretty sure that the all the whole whatever the points are there in the data set that will not be on your straight line for sure so for that you need some some something some uh, what you can say loss function or something right to to yeah. uh, to define the which model you should be focusing on right so so what you so that optim so there should be some optimization problem right so to yeah. optimize that you should what you are doing you you are telling the model that the loss function should be minimum right yeah and then on the basis of minimizing the loss function you are building a model okay there yeah. can be a function where you will be maximizing the loss function but that that is a different stuff like for you will be focusing on minimizing the loss function there can be some other tunes hyperparameter tuning also but but first the only basic thing that that is must is you, you need to minimize the loss you need to minimize the loss means whenever the new data are coming there should be a very less error and the less error means whatever the point new data you are giving the output should be a very good predictor right if if the final output was something like 5 then your model should predict something like like nearby to 5 right not exactly 5 but should be nearby that is that is what we are saying like uh, to minimize the loss function right yes sir sir so, so i had a doubt regarding uh, dimension of a function ha huh. huh. so for example sir uh, is it is the dimension based on the number of features uh, yeah yeah so even if the feature is say for example duplicates uh, for example if it's both it's if say if, if it is x comma x then also it is a two dimension uh, no see no, no, see uh, why is this, uh, why is this, why why is this, okay i is not fine so see if you are just giving a model the same what you can say the the core like both are almost same okay like if you are giving two features and bo both are very much co related to each other like for example you are giving a height of a person and the weight of a person okay as a two I features to predict something, to predict else. something else. right so if you are giving height and weight both that means what both are almost co related like it's a pre assumption that if a person height will increase the weight will also increase right yeah yeah correct so yeah. 
the model can be built if you are giving the same feature almost same features also but if you are giving one features out of the two also i don't think so there will be much change in the model this is what i was telling you about the dimensional reduction yeah yeah yeah, the, yeah yeah so in the dimensional reduction that is what we generally use if you have yeah, yeah. just like 300 3000 so you can find out of those 3000 to 5 is best features where you the information is also not getting loose okay and then also you are able to build a good model so yeah, yeah. what the, so there it will help us a lot right because you yeah, are just having a five you can get easily de- like en- encode and decode it because it will be easily almost really approximately similar yeah 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 correct okay. but then yeah but the main doubt was sir and so x comma x will be like the Uh, two features right but x square in a like a single thing that will be one feature a different feature so now we are moving to a polynomial stuff so you, yeah. that also can work as a different features like x so what happens generally if x is not working we start working as x square or something else so that generally we read in polynomial regression or some other uh, degree stuff okay so that we do from our end to to square the feature or something else we are doing with the you know with the whatever the data set whatever the feature we have we are manipulating the features and then after manipulating that we are building a model okay okay yeah actually sir i realized like this is from week 2 like starting actually the doubt was there so i guess i'll like, in more detail i'll maybe ask in next session yeah yeah Yeah. It, was, it is related like the f- functions and graph and plotting like plotting of one dimensional actually i had doubt about that also like why does like one dimensional function plotting is two dimensional so with one dimensional we are plotting in one is out in one is out that's why you are getting two that's why you are getting two okay 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 yeah okay okay understood sir thank you so i have a Hmm. Uh, shall I go? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sir, yeah. I have a, um, I, I have. A, it's a very confusing thing to me, sir. It's from week two, sir. Can I ask? Yeah, you can ask. Okay. But yeah, you can ask the week two in the upcoming Saturday also. So it's fine. It's okay. a uh, like uh, just one doubt, sir. So it's huh. like uh, in. in the lecture 2.6 sir in week week 2 uh, so there's uh, sir gave three interpretations for the gradient sir and um, in the second interpretation sir says that the gradient is um, what's that note uh, the gradient is perpendicular to the interpretation gradient of a function at a point is perpendicular to the contour passing through that point so i didn't exactly uh, get uh, so also drew the image uh, but i couldn't see anything perpendicular okay. so you can imagine that as a tangent and it's normal like contour is generally you are taking what you are plotting a, like whatever the plot you have taken or maybe okay so saturday we'll discuss that from the starting from the week like all the what you can say from lecture okay. one so you can attend that session okay thank you hello yeah, Yeah. Hello, sir. Week one graded assignment question number sixteen and eighteen. Uh, I am totally confused how to solve. Can you please discuss the approach? Okay, I'll, I'll just tell you the basic approach how to go. First, I need to check. Sixteen yeah. and eighteen. Uh, sir, can you? Uh, sir, could you Thank please you. give me an idea like what will be what what we will be doing in today's session? I mean no. so today's I'll just in the starting I'll be taking the doubts whatever you have for the week one and then we'll be solving the so so today's session was like solve with us only so okay so somebody started take like asking the doubt so we'll clear that and then we'll do solve some problem uh, from week one so this like a solve with us session today okay, okay. got it so got it thank you thanks a lot okay yeah thank you uh, okay So seventeenth and eighteenth, right? Sir, sixteen and eight, sixteen and seventeen are joined. And ah, after sixteen. So this is like uh, you have the data set, and it's a classifier. And what will be the average misclassification error? So what is the misclassification error? You just need to 
count right wherever the output you are whatever the output has been given in the data set or the, in the metadata whatever you have got and from the uh, what do you can say from the model that that is given here like gx is given is sine of x1 minus x2 minus 2 and hx is this one so in and the video lecture there is a specific that if it is greater than this then we'll take it as a minus sign less than this then uh, plus sign like this but here what greater than okay classification so no you just have to calculate the loss here right so you just need to count the function where it is misclassifying right so according to the if they are asking for the loss function for the g so you just need to see wherever g is dif differing from y okay so the earlier outcome and the uh, whatever the outcome you are getting from the this model gx is equal to sin of x1 minus x2 minus 2 and then you need to count the misclassification and then divide it the number of uh, data set that you have got similarly yeah. you can do the same step with the h also so the, yeah. both are a different model x sir i i i, I go uh, more specific x1 and x2 is given in the data set right yeah hmm. then i put all the data from all the uh, sample uh, set i put x1 and x2 then yeah, i will... uh, gx i apply G in the gx Mm. then sign how can i decide the sign see if you, so if you, this is a positive then this is a positive like zero if this is a zero then you need to take positive that that was discussed in lecture right oh okay uh, yes it is discussed in the lecture but i cannot correlate with this problem so you can uh, watch not watch just go through the slide of the where this classification loss from one some problem is also discussed there so i guess that will help you okay and 18 sir encoder decoder problem okay so encoder decoder is also it's a encoder that is given f x is equal to x1 x2 x3 is equal to x1 plus okay is a encoder function and then this is a decoder okay so whatever the values you are getting with the help of that you need to decode that gu is also been given u 2u and 3u yes, yes. right so you will yes. be getting some x1 x2 x3 from here right yes from the decoder yes i first of all i calculate f of x1 x2 x3 using the formula then i put huh. gu yeah you will be getting some values right yes. and now what okay data set, i found the f x and gu Okay. Hmm. So now you got the earlier x1, x2, x3 is you already know, and the later that you'll be getting from the decoder, you already now you have that also. And by comparing this, you can calculate the reconstruction error, right? So you just need to differentiate, do the squaring. Which, which formula we are going to use for reconstruction error? So this formula is also there in the like lecture. Last lecture it will be there. Last or second last lecture. Sir, in in the last question that she asked, uh, we have to divide by total number uh, of uh, value. Uh, total number. It's a total number data set. Ah, uh, yeah, total number of data set. Okay. Uh, Is that? Okay. Six. Eighteen question. Right. Okay. Wait. Sixteenth. Uh, Sixteenth. So uh, you have to divide with the data point, the number of data point. Okay. So six, right? Six. Uh, uh, six, six. So the number of data is how much? Well, let me check. Sixteenth, uh, right? Ah, uh, uh, six. <clears throat> okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sir, I have a doubt in practice assignment question. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is like the last question, twelfth uh, question, where I was able to calculate correctly the loss for pair two, but loss for pair one value is not coming correct for me with the same approach that I used. Okay, one second, I'll just share the screen. Shall I share my screen? No, no, I'll, I'll share that. Okay.
so this twelfth one. This question only, right? Which question you were asking? Twelfth one, right? I'm sorry, sir. I was on mute. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so we have our data here, and uh, my twelfth question was not coming correctly. Thirteenth, I was able to solve correctly, but not twelfth. With the same approach. Okay. So now you have considered the data point is given given x one x two x three. Consider the two encoder. Okay. F one f dash f tilde with the decoder g and g tilde. Okay. Uh, you need to reduce that answer reduction from three to one. Fine. The the reconstruction loss. With the mean of the square distance between the actual. Okay, so if you are getting for thirteen, uh, maybe some calculation error would be there. Okay, I'll just open the. Did you get the solution for the practice finding? No, I don't know, sir. Did not check, sir. Okay, I'll just open that. Uh... So basically, I was uh, 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 I was taking the coordinate wise value. For each of them, ah, uh, you you can calculate x one, x two, x three from the decoder. Like yeah. first, you need to put it in the encoder, and then ah uh, decoder, you will be getting same values, right? Yes. X one, x one, x one, or whatever the values you are getting, you will yes. be getting the same. Like for the first one, you will yeah. be getting what nine, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And then you will be doing nine, ten minus nine, mm -hmm. cowl, sir, so one, one, and then zero, yes. right? Yes, sir. Similarly, you will be doing for all the four. Yeah, and then we will be adding it and dividing by four. Ha, add it and then divide it by four. So, sir, uh, are we taking the square root of this value because it's like a vector for us, right? With, no, no, you don't need to take the square root here. So, the formula was to do the square of like it's written also right here. You need to calculate the mean of the square distance, right? The mean of the square distance. You just need to do the square and then take the mean. Mean means just divided and by the number of uh, uh, data points. Okay. So are we not considering this as like a normal vector where we calculate it by distance as square root of the coordinates? From both the stuffs, I'll uh, you'll get the same thing. Uh, no, sir. Thirteen. I got the same uh, same answer. Okay. So twelfth one I did not get. Even you are taking this as a vector, mm -hmm. like ten i cap plus ten j cap plus nine k cap. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll be getting from here. You'll be getting nine i mm -hmm. i cap plus nine j cap plus nine k cap. So, mm -hmm. so k cap will get cancelled up. Mm -hmm. I will be left with. Okay, okay, got it. No, you don't have to do with the vector. So okay. just do it manually. Yeah. Okay, I got it. So what's uh, going wrong? Think norm square. We have to do right. Yeah, norm square. Norm sigma square. sigma one by one by n into sigma of norm square of uh, g of f x i minus f x minus x i. Hmm. So you don't have to take like, the square root. You don't have to take. Okay. So so why did I get the thirteenth one as a correct answer then? Maybe that would have worked for that question. <laughs> Okay. So, which question it was? Practice assignment twelfth and thirteenth. This is right twelfth one. Yes. Sir. So you have to do the square and then do the sum of all the four and divide it with four. So you don't have to do the square root. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yeah, sir. Uh, normalization. Uh, these two lines are called normalization, right? Which two lines? Sir, the um, sir, in the last column of the table, uh, the two lines that are there, like um, sir, last heading of the table. This one. Yes, sir. Uh, mod of the f of x. I yes. want. So, sir, uh, when we apply this function, um, uh, don't we write square root or uh, like isn't square root part of the formula? Square root, um, uh, uh, whatever is inside, uh, square plus uh, until the end 
of the sequence i mean square root mm-hmm. is square root. square root is a part of norm so here it is norm square so that's why square root is cancelled so oh. is this what you are presenting is a solution of practice assignment okay yeah, it's a practice assignment yes, this was not uploaded i think on the so where can we find this yeah okay this was not uploaded right yes yeah, it was not uploaded sir no sir it was not in the portal Okay, I'll upload it today. Like not today, but maybe tomorrow I'll upload it. So okay, if you're not getting the, you can just uh, tag me on the Discord, then maybe I'll get the idea to upload this. Okay, I'll upload this one. Uh, sir, uh, can you help me with density estimator estimation? Yeah. I did not. I did not got that concept. Okay, I'll try. So, so can we solve this question once? Uh, last one. That means okay. you understand yeah. it well. Yeah. Okay. So here the encoder, you got the, the the there was a function that you need to do that encoding, and then you'll be getting nine, fourteen, four, and eight. And the decoder was what decoder you'll be getting same right so that was fx 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 right so nine nine and you are getting and then if you are just because you need to compare after uh, doing the function after doing the dimensional reduction what values you are getting so you you were you are now you are getting nine 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 right mm. okay so nine 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 you have got and then if you subtract this you'll be getting what one one and zero you'll be getting right. So here mm. it is like minus one because he has just done the uh, subtraction the other way. But mm. in the end, you need to square that and then add, right? So mm. that will not make any change. Mm. So you, you have to square. So minus one k square is one, and then one minus one k square is one. So if you do the summation, you'll be getting two. Similarly, mm. you'll be doing for all the uh, all the data points. So you are mm. getting two here, and then here you'll be getting two k square four plus one plus one six, and then. Similarly, you'll get for all the values, and then you need to do the summation. And because mm-hmm. you have to calculate the square distance and then mean square distance, right? So mean mm-hmm. square distance is like simply doing the square and then calculating the mean of all the okay. square error that you have got. So we are again going to square this, or we are just going to add it and divide by four. This is already a square distance, That's right? Mean. So you have to calculate, or you have to calculate the square distance, right? Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. How to calculate the second last column? Can you please show the table again? Can you please show the table again? Okay. The g of f x i minus x i. Yeah. It's single value, but there is minus one, minus one, zero. Three value is there. Okay. So this, so this is an encoder, right? So this is a decoder. If we, this is a decoder. This is what we are. So decoder is what? So g of u is what? G of u is f of x comma f of x comma f of x. So f of x is what? Nine, right? So you are getting nine, nine, nine. So this x one is nine, x two is nine, and x three is also nine. Similarly, you will do for all the data points, right? So this was a encoder, right? So it, you have just encoded from three dimensional to one dimensional, and then you have changed from one dimensional to three dimensional, right? And then you are calculating that okay, what is the loss from loss, right? Yes. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Okay, nine minus ten, nine minus ten, and like this. Huh, the same way you've done. Nine minus ten, nine minus ten, and nine minus nine. Nine. Sir, it is f x i minus g x i, right? Uh, whatever you want to do, you can do. So it will because in the end you have to do the squared of uh, the distance, right? So if you are doing even f x minus g x or like the the first one minus second or the second minus one, it will not. Because see, what you have to do is you have to calculate the 
uh, if this is a straight line, you need to calculate the distance of the data points, right? Yes. Okay. So, like the dist square distance, right? So, even the data point is like in the le left side or the right side, it should not make an impact because in the end, you need to calculate the square distance of that. Like we were using x2 minus x1 formula. Uh, so even if you are doing x1 minus x2, because in the end you need to do the square, so that will not make any change. So both are same. Right? So yes. that's why we are doing square also. Otherwise, uh, it will be because many times what would have happened because this is a loss function, right? And loss function help us to know about how our model is behaving. And if I would have taken just a uh, just the difference between x1 minus x2 and not the square or maybe not the mod one. So what it would have done, like for example, this was the model that is it's a linear regression. This this linear function I I have got. And now the data points are like here, and then one is here. So maybe in the end it can get to the distance. Maybe it can the distance from this point can be plus two and this can be minus two, right? So in the end we can get zero. Zero means what? Well, this this is a good function. Right, the loss function is minimized. Right, loss function is zero for this this straight line for this linear function. Right, but that should not happen because this is not a good. It's like not a good model. Why? Because the squared value is getting me uh, a good good interpretation. Right, from here I was getting plus two ka whole square and plus here I was getting minus two ka whole square. That means what the loss function, the loss value what I'm getting here, I'm getting eight. Right. Did you get the idea? Because that's why we are doing the squared distance and then taking the mean, or maybe there there are other functions where uh, we don't take the mean also. Excuse me, sir. Huh? Uh, sir, we have we are having four loss functions, right, sir, in the week one. Huh? But in most of the sums, maybe in graded assignment also, as well as in practice assignment. We are uh, using only one with the squared mean loss always. Uh, when will we use the other functions, sir? I mean, the other loss function. Achha, other loss function. So, okay. So, we are just dealing with the mean squared. Uh, most most probably, what, uh, according to my concern, whatever. Uh, we so, use... whenever the data stuff changes, right? So, here, mostly we are dealing with the, the data as we are in the form of math. Math, mathematical values, yeah. right? Some numerical yes, values. But so, but here we are not working on any other type of data set. Like there can be some data set that will work on like uh, some alphabetical value also. That okay. data, like for example, uh, uh, DNA sequence. Okay, and in the DNA mm. sequence, your data will be in the form of like uh, protein. Uh, what do you say? A, T, C, G, sort of things like. Okay. Like in, in the form of alphabet. So there you'll be using some some different uh, norm, some different loss function. Loss function. Okay. Yes, sir, like, for density, I mean a density estimation reduction, we will use one loss as per formula. We have one loss function, but uh, I'm not clear with that, sir. How do we apply in the problems? Okay. Okay. I'll just start. Okay. I'll just go through the density estimation one, and then okay. we'll solve the problem. Okay. Sure. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Maybe okay. I'll uh, so here for each of so this slide is it uploaded? This one it can work as a revision slide for you. Oh, okay, 
Yeah, this one is uploaded, I think. No. No, it's not. No, sir, it is not. No, it's, it's not uploaded. Only the PPT slides only uploaded, sir. Yes, there is no, not so much mathematical problem. Ah, That's no, sir. Why... Only whatever I have discussed in the video, that will be uploaded only as a PPT. Okay. Sir, there is no question of density estimation. And uh, actually, we are... Yes, sir, of course, that. correct. Sir, basically, there is a loss function calculation. Ah, that's why, sir. Okay, so this will also get uploaded. Hmm. So for this uh, term, course structure has been changed or what? Only these slides are uploaded, sir. Okay, this is the same yeah. slide that is used. Yes, the sir, same slides. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so when... So what is density estimation? Can somebody tell me about a brief idea? Can somebody give the brief idea about the density estimation? I just go uh, from start to end. Can somebody give me a Maybe basic idea? Maybe we are not uh -huh. sure with the uh, output, sir. Sir, well, what we can do is by looking at the data, uh, we can understand the underlining distribution. And uh, through that, we can find out more data sets which lies under that distribution. And then we can make use of that to um, generate a model. Hmm, that, that's totally correct. So, which uh, okay, so it will come under supervised or unsupervised? Unsupervised. So do you have any label for this? No. Do, you, sir. do we have no. anything? Okay, so we don't have anything. So we just have the data, right? We just have yes, the sir. data without a output, right? Mm, yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So let's so the, the basic use of this density estimation. Like for example, you went, you have some. So the same example I'll give you. I have a MRI of some thousand patients, and that is mm. thousand patient that consists of maybe a normal patient also with some disease like Alzheimer, dementia, and the normal people also. So dementia is the starting stage, and then the Alzheimer will come, and and some people can have uh, uh, can be normal also out of that thousand people. So, okay. but that thousand, whatever the data that I'm having, that thousand from that MRI, maybe I'll extract some some data from that uh, MRI in the mathematical form. So, do you think that thousand uh, data set can help us to build a model where I'll be able to predict the uh, upcoming persons whether this person is suffering from that disease or not? That thousand maybe MRI will that help? Yeah, well, sure, definitely it will help, no, sir. But I think we feel it will help. Uh, but do you think that will help us to get, give a good good model with the thousand or maybe two thousand data set? No, sir. No. Thousand is not no. enough. So we need, need the samples to be large. Okay. Yeah, it should be the data point should be uh, as large as possible. Okay, so we should will be needing a, a larger pool of data, and then because. As the number of data increases, you'll be having a, a better model, in spite like uh, compared to the uh, okay, uh, okay, sir. In the model uh. with the lesser data points. Okay, so yeah. now in the density estimation, what, uh, sir, how I, it can be helpful for us is, sir, one so, question. Uh, sir, as you said, uh, like uh, uh, the thousand uh, data points will not uh, suffice. So mm -hmm. let us say, as you gave the example, like number of patients visiting to a hospital. So that numbers maybe you know per day basis it will be uh, ranges from thousand as hundred to thousand, and in that case let us say hospital is uh, management is trying to analyze uh, or what will be our predictions for uh, why, how many number of patients will come in future or let us say in next uh, months. So in that case they they uh, they can rely on the same model like uh, whatever number of patients are visiting to that hospital. So based on that they only they will predict right. And they cannot say we need uh, lots of data, then only we will predict and we have only this many data, we cannot predict the next month. So how do we uh, go about uh, Can you repeat that with uh, your voice? Uh, I was not able to. Was that that the problem for anyone else? Because I was not able to yes, hear. Sir. He was slow. Yeah, so the voice was a very dim. Uh, uh, sir, uh, is it audible now? Yeah, yeah, now it is fine. Uh, sir, actually, I was telling, like, uh, let us say in a hospital, uh, the number mm -hmm. of 
patients sir visiting to that hospital is 100 to 1000 people and that is per day visit and mm -hmm. uh, the hospital management would like to draw a model and uh, to understand what will be their predictions in next few months uh, for, for, for in that hospital so in that case uh, that uh, the 100 to 1000 data points would suffice or will they have to wait for the lakhs of data to be collected over years and then and then only they will be able to predict that model or can they predict at the same like recently also let us say january february march and they can predict in months of uh, april may so, so that number uh, is not going to give you a good model for sure because that that's a very less like a very small pool of data right 100 to 1000 but from that 1000 we can make create some more data but but the problem is uh, so this density estimation is, is a one method to just broaden your data point but this is not the best one best uh, thing to best approach to what to build a model with a good good uh, what you can say have a good accuracy right so this is a one way but there are some other ways also right but the only thing is if you have the number large pool of data that will help you a lot see there are so many limitation of this density estimation also whenever you are doing you are broadening the data points so that will start making the copy of of the same data points also so this is the one way but this this, this have a very large pool of limitation also where to use where not to use so in, in this hospital <laughs> stuff you can't uh, you can't be using this method to to broaden your data point and then uh, calculating calculating uh, what you can say building a model that that number is that's very less yeah large uh, large means like Large means like it uh, depends on uh, like model to model in in, in where uh, it's a, like in the hospital or in the in this stuff in the healthcare stuff you'll be needing a lot lot of like large very large number of like large means uh, depends on the model to model generally we can't say anything uh, a specific value as as large or or uh, or, or uh, small. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so so we were discussing the density estimation, and the density estimation is is a one way where you have a very not very large pool of data points, but from that whatever you have, you need to go to the parent distribution and then recollect a large pool of data points. Okay, and then how will you do that? So that is a uh, uh, there are a way like you would have read about the Bayesian estimation or some other estimation how maximum likelihood estimation to estimate the value of mean or, or maybe the sigma or mean of, of the parent distribution like if you have the normal distribution which is something like you have got some information about that normal distribution like you are getting a data point you have thousand data points right now you have you have a thousand data points then you can get you can trace back the points from where you are getting the uh, those data points, right? How will you trace back? So there are other methods also. There are methods like Bayesian estimation and then the uh, other estimation also, but two estimation that you would have read already in the stats too, right? And from after tracing back, if you are having the, if you have, if, like for example, for the normal distribution, if you have the mean and sigma, now you can get a lot of data points from that that uh, distribution right because now if you are able to plot even the normal distribution you'll be able to get a large chunk of data points from that distribution right so this is what we are doing generally we do the density estimation we generally trace back the uh, parent distribution and then from the parent distribution we can take out uh, a large pool of data points more right? number of outputs from the parent yeah. uh, data we will take more number of outputs sir. Uh, data point yeah oh data points okay okay sir hmm. right so this is what the, the goal is to get is large if if x belongs to data and low otherwise okay okay sir this the data and then from this n data we need to get a large chunk of large pool of data okay yes sir and we do have loss function for this function also but we and this will is not the loss function any hmm. yeah, yeah, go ahead. that's what sir no, uh, actually, we are not implementing this loss function in any of our practice assignments. That's mm. what. Yeah. So this this is a one question that that sir has took. 
so this is a pretty simple one and he has not made any complex stuff in the density estimation he just took some points like 1.2 so we have a four data points okay and you would so so if you, you have to, any uh, fresh question can you please do that i don't have i'll just uh, maybe i can prepare some but not now i can just prepare and upload it on the discord but this is what i have okay. for now density this is a uh okay let me check that with the yes, sir that's what actually we feel that we are lacking in solving problems so if you upload some more practice problems the, oh yeah the problem i can put uh, that we change yes sir this this one okay this is the same uh, problem this is the same one like only the data point so, so sir, see can i yeah. say some sir better uh -huh. explain the uh, money a little bit from this practice assignment yes sir. quite similar to the assignment it will be better for question I on uh, density estimation in practice assignment this practice assignment there are lots of the problems if you uh, this are there is no problem on density estimation. there is no yeah. problem there is no problem in grade assignments also yeah so that question is fine please go ahead with it Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just tell you yeah so see yes sir so I'll, I'll just give you the idea okay I'll, I'll upload it the problem also some maybe one two problem uh, from the density estimation also so see so i have some data points so this was the data points 1.2 1.9 so what i told you if you have the data points you need to trace back the parent distribution right and then if you are tracing yes, back that parent distribution like for example we have like five people and five of the people has traced back the five different distribution now you need to get right you need to get like which of the five is the best one which is best parent distribution for the given data point like like i have this 1.2 1.9 4.3 4.8 is the four data points right and this four data points are in the one dimensional only so this is the one of the simplest one so this is the four data points right and now you need to trace back from where this data point has came right if you are able to trace back that now from those data point you can take out like 100 of data points from like right so what we have done so four people are there p1 has predicted okay this is a the parent distribution for all these four data points is uniform distribution from 3 to 10 so p1 has predicted this one the model is what this is a model uniform distribution from 3 to 10 the second guy has uh, predicted from 0 to 10 the third one from 1 to 5 and the fourth one is from 3 to 5 right so it's four parent is four people has predicted the four parent distribution from where this all data points is coming now how will you judge that which one of them is the best one so you need to calculate what loss function right the and only sir, one thing sir, one minute yeah so these these uh, this, these are the assumption that uh, people have taken that it, it is uniform distribution or it has come some yeah so this is some, in... you can just assume this this four people has got this some random stuff yeah. they have done and four model they have got the first one has got three to ten second one has got zero mm -hmm. to ten and the third one one to five and then three to five so the four model simply they have got four distribution they have got right okay okay if you are getting this four not like each person has got a different distribution now you need to get so why we are using the loss function so he here was just telling you the loss function for the density estimation so in telling like he just went through some data points and then tell told you this this all four data points four models and out of this four model which one is the best and how will you select that on the basis of the loss function and the loss function based on the it. error i mean how many data matches with that ah uh, so that matching of the pattern generally help us in classification Classific in the classification so every time you'll be having a different loss function that is what i'm telling you so as the model will change as the algorithm will change you'll be having a different loss function for as the data point even will change you'll be having a different loss function is what you are just having a different method to know the final stuff the final output and the the whatever you are getting from the model should be almost same okay in that way we'll be needing a, a what you can say a function or a, or a steps 
where you'll uh, function that will help you like a loss function is helping you like in the linear regression that was helping you right it was helping you see how close all those data points are from the final from the model has predicted a straight line but all the data was like along side maybe on the maybe on the straight line or may not be on the straight line but that loss function was helping you to know how close all those data point are from the straight line right this is what the loss function was doing earlier so here also it is doing the same stuff so loss function is telling you so out of the four five model whatever you have built it which one is the not the there is no such best model but the out of this four which one is the i'm giving you the which one is minimizing the loss function so every times in the ml you will be what you will be doing the minimization of the loss function so you'll be having some problem optimization problem and some constant okay and in the optimization problem with the help of constant you will be solving with the help of many methods like uh, later you'll be going to the gradient descent or some other method okay okay uh, sir in this uh, this case which you are showing now because I, somebody asked a different question and uh, so this question is going to be different direction so this loss function how uh, let us say five special are there and they have found out this distribution and the limits are here then how are we calculating this loss function in the different part of it can you please explain this uh, loss function will be calculating oh yes at that page you have shown me that page can you please explain that page this page yeah you are explaining some with with an example so that time uh, i'm seriously not getting like your voice is low uh, maybe the problem from not from my side for sure it's so the problem from him please check your mic actually or you are can reconnect your uh, plugin the okay, camera ready now yeah rama can uh so that loss function that page you you have shown no that is uh, explaining through an example so that uh... okay so this this one yes 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 sir. okay so so this this is, the, this is a four you can say a model you can say the assumption of the parent distribution and out of this assumption or model you can say which one is the good so how will you do that so you have the loss function for that right so you have this loss function and on the basis of this you'll be able to say which of the four is the good one or whatever like in the later part you'll be doing so on the basis of this loss function you'll be able to say which one is good right so like for example p4 is having a same probability like the loss well the loss function value as p1 is equals to infinity and then so the best uh, and then you have the loss a uh, function of the p2 and then the loss function of the p3 so out of this 3 p3 is best uh, not best like out of the four this is a better out of four right because this p4 and p1 is like almost uh, it's not giving anything right but p2 and p3 is getting a better uh, out of four and then the p3 is how do you can say the best one so and what is that p3 p3 is that it's telling that the parent distribution for this should be coming from 1 to 5 right and all you can see that all the data points are from 1 to 5 almost right that's why it's giving you a loss function with the minimum p uh, mon minimum loss function uh, loss function value right you can see that so 3 to 10 also is like same but 3 to 10 is giving us very larger like what you can say the broader uh, density function and from the loss function also you can see that right p4 is also not giving but from p2 and p3 you can see that p3 and all the data point are also lying inside the p3 even it's not even if if you are getting some data points where uh, you will be getting the parent distribution where all the data points will not lie uh, inside the parent distribution and if that is getting giving you the better loss function values that is the better of out of whatever the model you have Did you get in uh, like something from here? Okay, 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 sir, I got it. Okay. I have a question over here. So, how to calculate the loss 
I mean, because I know the function is given up uh, minus log. So how it is being calculated over here? And what would be the loss for all these functions? Sir, this is the slide from week one. Yeah, this is week one only. Week one, or which number? 1.5 or 6? This is 1.6, yeah, sixth one. No, cannot. 1.5, I think, sir. Okay, 1.5. Okay, this is 1.5. No, it's just six no, no, one, six, last six, one. Six. Yeah. Sir, in this case, always we are going to use the minus log um, probability of xi only. Yeah. We calculate. This is the standard formula that we use. This is the standard that the professor has told to use, right? There mm. can be some other method also, some other loss function also, but here you'll be using this only. Okay. Yeah, so somebody else was asking some about the loss function. What was, can you repeat that? So, sir, I have searched all the 1.6 slides, but this problem is not included in my slide. I don't know why. Oh, somebody... a topic like yeah. density estimator 2, illustration 2, yeah. Unsupervised learning density estimate. It is in the last minute. Yeah. It, no, it is not. P dash and P2, P1 and P2 GMM, the last problem. Okay, I don't have that same job, but because this is for the. Uh, so everybody else is, is able to see that. Yeah, I have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess there is some problem from you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. able to see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, anything else from this this week, or can we move to the solve with us? Hello, sir. Can can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. So, I was just asking how to calculate the actual loss in numbers. I mean, for that example, uh, you were showing. Okay, me. actual uh, here the loss. Loss. Right. Okay, last loss value. Yeah, loss so, value exactly in numbers. How how much points of loss we are getting for each uh, model over here? So uh, for the uniform distribution, you already know the PDF for the uniform distribution, right? So for if if a model is from three to ten, the uh, what should be the PDF for that? So one upon b minus a. Right? Yes, sir. One upon B minus B is what? Seven. One upon seven. So one from three to B minus A. Hmm. B is 10 and A is 3. Okay. That's the PDF function because whenever you'll plot a, uh, or plot a, what is it, uniform distribution, the probability density function would be what? Would be upon one upon B minus A. That, that's the width of that function. Okay. Because the area should be equals to one. Right? If you have a uniform distribution of like let's say from three to ten, okay. So to get the area as what to get the area as one, mm -hmm. this height should be what one upon seven, right? Because one right. upon seven and then into seven should be equals to one. So mm -hmm. the area under the curve should be equals to one. That is the probability of this like of this uh, distribution. You can say this is the uniform distribution from three to ten. Now you need to see this two point is coming under this point, right? So for right. So, so this is how you have five by seven area. You mean to say five by? I mean, if we select this model huh. for uh, presenting x one, x two, x three, then you'll be getting zero so, because one point two so is only, not lying. Yeah. So, so basically, we are calculating the probabilities of each point as per that model. So x1 yeah. is not present in 310, so probability is 0. x2 is not present, so probability is 0. But x3 and x4 are present, but with probability 1 by 7. Correct. 1 by 7, 1 by 7. Similarly, we will do for all of them. And yeah. then we will be calculating uh, 1 by n summation log minus log p probability of each of them. X correct, correct. That's how the, its calculation is. 
one one more question over here so out of these four points x1 to x4 uh, the probability of finding uh, these four points in this range 3 to 10 is uh, 2 by 4 right because we are able to find two points inside this range in which one p1 yes no it I'm should be 1 upon 7 for this one x3 and then for x4 it should be 1 upon 7 1 upon 7 because 1 upon 7 because the width of this function the width is what 7 to get mm -hmm. the area as 1 1 upon 7 multiplied by 7 should be equals to 1 right so that's why for each what you can say the, the, the density function provide density would be what 1 upon 7 for this function right okay See? okay did you get that because the width is 7 so the height should be equals to 1 upon 7 right right okay Got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anything else from the week one, or should we move to the solve later? They're like simple, simple question. It will not Let's take much time. Like, uh, okay. Anything from your practice or graded? Um, like graded also, I can discuss, but the approach only I'll be discussing. I uh, know, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, can you explain a little bit like I've forgotten how we, what is norm in this case? What is norm, what we say, concept? Norm is also the like generally we use for the vector concept, right? To calculate the distance yeah. between two vectors. Yeah, yeah. So it's just that. Norm uh, square, sir, is saying that's why you need to do the square of, of that, uh, whatever mm -hmm. the distance you are getting. So it's oh. almost same, just a two way to say that in the form of vector we generally say norm chi square or the distance is norm mm -hmm. okay. norm is simply the square root of whatever the vector you are getting the distance within two vectors mm -hmm. okay so yeah so do we have ppt for week two as well because i cannot find that on my dashboard and i was yeah it's for... there but i think i think so it's not uploaded or what i need to check with the portal team there one okay. doubt huh so norm here we have to always take the square root or we have to take the inner product. What in uh, why are you getting confused with like, the inner product? Because again those stops are there in the vector if you are doing anything in the form of vector. Yes, yes. So I, I don't think so we are using anything here in the at least in the week one, maybe in the week two uh, the vector concepts have been taught so maybe it would be there the inner product or the norms and all but here we are using simple square function square function because we are not dealing with anything in the form of vector we are just calculating a model and from that model we are just taking how I, um, our model is performing to get that i'll be needing the squared distance from that whatever the model i have built the maybe it's, if it's a linear regression then i'm getting uh, that linear regression in the form of one degree, then I'll be getting a straight line. I just need to get how much distance is uh, the the label or the output, the data output is from the model's output. Okay, this is what I need. Okay, I don't need anything else. So I am not dealing anything in the form of inner vector or anything else. So there can be a number of, uh, what you can say, the definition. Definition means you can have a loss function in the form of uh, whatever you are saying that also in the in the form of inner vector or maybe in the form of norm or maybe mod or or in the form of cost minus cost form also but here i'm just yes. dealing with the squared form of that so so we are just working on the squared distance that's it uh, sir, okay. I'm hoping like always uh, means uh, it's going to be linear regression only or uh, how the model is supposed means as we go up in this course it will be other type of models also so in the end, uh, there will be some unsupervised uh, 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 algorithm also. But from upcoming uh, weeks, you'll be going through the linear algebra part. And then you'll be dealing with uh, a dimensional reduction uh, that the principal component analysis. And then uh, you'll be going through the gradient descent problem. So mostly the algorithm part will be there in the ML techniques. OK, here we'll be just building the math math part so how will you solve any problem in the, in the ml mm -hmm. that part you'll be dealing here mm -hmm. 
So let's go with the solvate as because we had already wasted. Uh, it will not take much time. Like it will take one twenty thirty minutes. So a week one is like uh, not that difficult. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so this is a, this are pretty simple one. So you have a data point and a guy whose name is Arun goes for a walk on a daily basis. This is the first problem. And maybe you can because this are uh, you can write in the chat box also. And if you have doubt, you can just speak out. Okay. So this is a Arun goes for a walk on a daily basis and then records the number of steps. So he has some gadget and then he's recording that number of steps he has covered on each a day using a gadget that is speedometer. And the following table shows the recorded data for a week. He wants to know how many steps he can cover on the next day. So which model is more suitable here? And tell me the reason also. Regression. Regression. But yes. Have, okay. So what's the reason why he should be needing? Why can't? Okay. Because, because output what, will be given. Because given output form. has been given. Yeah, it should output output should be in continuous form. So. Yeah. Okay, and what what is the feature here? What's the feature for this data set? So you can see this data. Day set. and steps. Day it's, and day and steps okay can somebody else try what what are the features here so i think we have the data points only for day one day two day three and the uh, one second i'll just uh, one second uh so over here we do have data points for seven days so probably it's a week's data and the week is repeating itself no sir only one feature only steps Steps is output, na? Sir, will it be will it be a time series kind of thing? The steps is will be the x uh, on the x axis, right? So, can you show the question once again? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just open it once again. So that tell me the features for this this meta like whatever the data set. Data points you have day and number day of steps. steps. Okay, so if day and number of steps is the features, uh, what is the label here? So you were telling, so it's a supervised, right? So you'll be using some supervised algorithm, right? Or unsupervised? Mm -hmm. Supervised. Label okay. or day and so, steps. So this is a continuous value, sir. What? You'll be using? So this is a continuous step, right? Hello? This is a continuous step, yeah, that, that is fine. So which model will be using? First tell me supervised or unsupervised, then tell me regression and classification, and then tell me the feature and then the label of this data point. So this is it's supervised. Is regression, supervised. Regression, supervised. Okay, that is clear, I guess. Then tell mm -hmm. me the feature of this feature. Day and steps. Day and steps. And then the label, what is the label then? Steps. How come features? This so the feature can't be same as label, right? So how come the, the day? Is only saying day? No, sir. The feature is only sir, steps. Sir, for uh, label for is weeks now. So for regression, actually, the label uh, there is no label thing like that in the feature. Uh, but in regression, sir. What? So in regression, generally we don't say it is a label, right? Because label is only for classification. Classification. Yes, sir. So here it's basically, uh, let us say you have y, y is equal to mx plus c kind of thing, right? Okay. So what you have told, you told for, for what you told for regression, you don't need, you don't need label, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Needed, so, what's about the unsupervised then? Not even unsupervised, even unsupervised, so we will not have data. Okay. So, how will you no, predict no, the value if you have? Labels, okay. How will you predict the if you have the? Yes, sir. Sir, for regression, we will 
we will fit fit a line kind of thing so that's why it's called okay guess, how like, will you fit the line if you don't have the output from the starting itself like i will just delete this value just mm -hmm. you have the date number of mm -hmm. steps you don't know how will you predict the value okay, how how what is what would the number of steps will be going on the 12th of september so if you don't have this is the label man this this is label mm -hmm. okay if you so this is the totally what we are whatever you are saying it's like totally uh, uh, incorrect mm -hmm. see label you should be needing for any of the supervised texting okay if you don't have the label you will be coming to unsupervised one okay so unsupervised is what i told you one example you have so many fruits okay you don't name uh, you don't know the name of that fruits okay and then building a model and then showing displaying the picture and then it will categorize on the basis uh, of whatever the picture it has got so it will classify on the basis okay this is the apple this is not apple it's not name but it will just tell you it's the one type of fruit this is the second type of fruit this is the third type of fruit because you were not having the label from the starting that's why it has categorized into 1 2 3 yes sir so i thought is what i'm saying is rather than saying it as a label Uh -huh. It is a continuous value, like for example. Yeah. Like, okay. Like so this is a continuous value. So but this here it working as an output value, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So mm -hmm. on the basis of that only, because so here the feature is day only, but that is basically is not a feature in itself, right? It, it is working as a feature because okay, this is the data set I, I was having for this feature. this for this data set this is the feature and this is the label but if you think from your like if you just think this this can't work as a feature this day can't work as a feature right mm -hmm. because so can't we say here feature and label are the same sir it is the same what is the unsupervised this is a no. supervised for sure okay because and this is a regression problem also and here the feature is this one day and the label or you can say the output is this one but only the uh, yeah. only dates are given for day but yeah uh, only the day that is what i am saying you type this, of day is a sun day or rainy day uh, that depends on the state ha uh, that is what i was saying it is a time series of data like it only have the day it's so from the data set you can see this this is working as a feature but but if you if you think it is not explained a, properly uh, that i uh, want yeah so see if you have a data set like this if you have like a data set where you need to predict the price of a phone okay so you will be having features for it. so what is the storage capacity of that phone yes sir okay But only only the company name is not be the complete feature it can't work as that but if you just have the if you have only the yeah. this thing like the company name then that is the only step that is the only feature right are you getting my point one of the feature but not the complete see if you have been given a data set where only the company name and the price is given okay so this is a, this is what you have got then you will be saying right this is a data point this is the feature i have and this is the label i have right because you have got this data set only so from this data set i was asking what is the feature and what is the label okay this will work or not work that's a different uh, point of like uh, things right this will so this feature will work or not that's a different thing but from whatever the data you have this is the feature and this is the label that's it right So can we conclude like this? I mean, whatever input is a feature, and whatever is output is a label. Yeah. So wherever you have in wherever you are getting the data set, so whatever the inputs is given is that features, and the output whatever you are getting is the label or the output for that function. And in those cases, you will be using the supervised technique. 
that's okay. it right and sir, if you have the label sir please repeat about the supervised but how can you guess uh, by studying the levels that means uh, by studying the steps that it is a supervised what what how can you guess that it is a supervised Learn. It is a supervised because you already know the output for the data set, right? If you don't have the output, then you'll be saying it's a unsupervised. Where you just have the data, and then on the basis of data, you need to build a model. In those cases, you'll be saying it's a unsupervised one. But if you have the label, then you can say it's a supervised. And if the labels are some form of continuous form or some exact value, then you can say it's a regression. but if you don't if you have the label in the form of some classified value then you will be saying it's a classification problem okay sir one second sir can we say this is a one dimensional feature ha uh, you can say this is a one dimensional data point data set ha uh, okay okay sir You just have one feature, and you just have a one. Uh, what you can say the output. That's output. It. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But dimensions always depend only on the input, no sir. Not depend it on. It will depend on the input, or you can say the features. How many features you are getting? Okay. Okay, sir. Clear. Thank you. Did you get the point? Is it clear now? Sir, I'm still confused. Yes, sir. Understanding this as a label because normally we say something is a label which has some um, characteristics like, uh, uh, in the sense like, uh, um, suppose that someone uh, eats vegetarian food, so these are the things that he eats vegetarian. Someone eats non-vegetarian, so these are the things as the label as it's a non-label. But in this case, all are our steps only. So how can this three eight hundred is a different label than five nine four five? see okay so you just forget the word label you just remember output okay so okay. so label or output both are same label means the output of any any prob any data point so i'll i'll explain you a different what we can use training data? level what training level labels like names what we are all having yeah table so. see label means the output value whatever has been given okay see you have this as a example so here what is the label label is the phone price is the label or the output you can say so what was the feature the camera what was the quality of the camera what was the ram and then the storage these are all the features of the phone and on the basis of these features you have some price of the phone right yes sir and that price is the label label means price the output or the label some some output value you are getting that output is generally termed as a label in ml okay okay so this makes sense like understanding that way output yeah so similarly simply the output whatever you are getting like for example you have some five six features and the basis of those five features you are saying this person is having this disease or not okay so if this person is having disease you are just indicating as a plus one and if he doesn't have that disease you are saying it's a minus one so you are saying okay plus one is the output or the label for that that particular data point or for that particular person okay similarly here you are saying for this phone one okay this some some phone some apple like six this this is a quality this is a camera 16 megapixel mm -hmm. some 16 gb ram and then the storage is 64 gb and then you are saying this this is having the price of 50k so this 50k is the output value or the price or the label for that that uh, iphone 50k as output yes sir yeah. is it clear now yes sir yes sir okay yeah yes sir very nicely yes, explained okay yes, sir. so now can we move to the second problem yes, yes sir okay so I now calculate this or just to identify the features and labels here we can't calculate this i'm just asking which model it will be suitable to use okay. that you can okay. calculate this you can calculate because this feature is already like this is a feature because it's been given in the form of data point but this feature will not be working as a feature for if you will build a model so they this is all steps this steps can't work as a uh, uh, as a feature If this day would have been working as a 
as a features then you would have seen that in the ml the ml would have worked pretty nicely in the stock market price uh, what you can say the prediction but you will not be getting a good model in that because in the stock market prediction you will be having only a day as a as a feature and that that is not a you already know that that will not work as a good feature right okay Okay. Okay. So, so sir, when they ask us to, you know, uh, to identify which ML model would you suggest? They are just expecting us to say whether it will be supervised, unsupervised regression classification that way. No, if you are see, this is a very broader perspective. Okay, if you're having a lot, if you have, if I will, if I'm giving you some data set, okay, and then I'm asking you, then it's asking about the base. some sort of model like which model in the regression what will be applying here random forest or tree, decision tree which would be the uh, which will work as a best for this this data point if i am giving you some sort of uh, word file with not word file some excel sheet and then with some sort of data and then i am asking you then you should be able to say which of the which of not the supervisor on the side because this is a very broader aspect anyone anyone can tell about the uh the 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 this 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 aspect supervisor on supervisor regression or continue because this is a very broader you should be able to say with the help of some 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 valid reason which model will be the best suitable for this data point that i have given you okay got it thank you yeah okay so now you have oh, okay so first one is clear right so we have moved to the second problem so the second problem is i'll just read a behavior uh, behavior analyst Uh, decided to study the emotional state of spouse of the end of each day. He decided to observe and record various events that that's the feature. What happens uh, that happens to her on a daily basis? The uh, table below shows the data collected over a week. Now you need to say which model will be suggest. Okay, now you have got the data. You so here, just tell me in the broader aspect. You don't you don't need to go with which uh, which from which algorithm will be using. I'm just asking whether it's a supervised or unsupervised, and whether it's a regression or a classification. And tell me the features. Supervised classification. Supervised classification. Supervised classification, sir. Why not it's a unsupervised? Unsupervised. Because we have the label. Not there. No, we have the labels, no sir. We have. Okay. So we have the labels. Okay. So we have the labels. Unsupervised. Why is that unsupervised? The number of steps not given. Label. What? and most of the cases it is yes or no sir this is what this is happening so it of the level okay so tell me what is this so what are the features how many of them are features and how many of them are labels so do you have label or not we have one label and three label and four four features sir i just one level and three feature the day feature days No, no. There is also three a features, three it's labels. Date of emotion of each. Happy, neutral, and anger or label. Date, date is not correlated with the uh, other. So we have three labels. It comes under classification, so there are three labels for output. Okay, so it's a binary classification or a multi-class classifier. So multi-class classifier. Right, and how many of them are like? How many labels are there? How many classes three. are there? Three, sir. Three. Happy neutral. Three classes. Can This is happy, neutral, and anger. You can denote it with plus one, zero, or minus one. Right? Yes. If this, if if he or she is happy, then plus one, neutral, zero, and then the minus one as for the anger. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Can somebody tell me how will you do that? If you have the multi-class classifier, how generally multi-class classifier works? We have yeah. what? So if we will be using if else and all to get to some conclusion. Uh, what we will be using? I uh, can get you. So we will be using some if else statement, like we explained that if this is true, then this will be. Ah, uh, if and else statement is fine. You will be using that is that is totally mm -hmm. correct. But okay, so how will you <laughs> in the algorithm? How will you build that? Because Till now, you have just said about the binary classification, right? Mm -hmm. One versus two, right? One versus two, or zero versus uh, plus one versus minus one, right? How will you do for this? Happy, neutral, and then anger. Uh, 
the three features are yes then it is happy so sign value we will check what the three features so okay yeah yeah that is fine if an else statement you can use yes 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 and whatever you can use sir we have to add the three sir if we get a positive value then it is happy if we get negative value then it's anger and if it is neutral how will you add this yes no how will you add this yes yes plus 1 and no is minus 1 okay that that is told that is fine that you can convert this yes no into some mathematical value and this. i'm just asking you how will you do this this how will you classify happy neutral and anger okay so i'll just um, this is a pretty simple one so whenever the binary classifier was there you were, you were just doing what you were just doing if if this is belonging to this otherwise other one right this is what you were doing if a, a statement how you will be using how you were using the uh, binary classifier you were using if the first statement otherwise the second statement right but here you yeah. have the three condition right yeah. if else if else if else if else yeah if else okay yeah that also can be used so what are you asking not clear <laughs> no no it's correct and asking the other okay so no you can use that if else statement also here you can use yeah. that you can just define this as a plus one right so you yeah. can define this as plus one so if this is satisfying this condition this is belonging to plus one otherwise mm -hmm. it's a different game like you can define mm -hmm. both as a zero for some some for for the first case and again you can define neutral as zero versus other so then in the ml you'll be working in the same way you'll be defining the multi class classifier as you'll be using a different algorithm and you'll be working as one versus all one versus rest in this way you'll be working so either if this con uh, some condition is there that if that is satisfying this is one otherwise it's a different uh, it's not that one so in the similar way you'll be doing for the neutral also and for the anger also but that that is uh, that's not like maybe you'll be uh, going through this in the ml technique okay so there will be Uh, okay so uh, you we have uh, if and else and inside else we have another if and else you mean yeah, that yeah fine yeah you can use that also it's a basic python code also yeah you can use that also so that is correct but Sir, normally we will not see if yeah, and else like state yeah yeah and if we deal with one happy then we will keep neutral and anger as rest so one with that one ha you will be keeping so deal with the neutral one. we have to keep happy and anger in the rest position ha correct correct so you can use that also see if an else statement i told you because so this classify classification is what is simply a if an else statement also if you are able to write that if an else statement you are able to classify the problem but if you have a large pool of data point data sphere if you have a very small chunk of data then you can write if an else statement but if you have a very large chunk of data point how will you write that bigger mm -hmm. code right so there you'll be using the ml program right mm. yes sir yes sir okay tell me how many features are there for this data for this data set four no sir four four sir i have four data set will the day will work as a feature yes, yes sir, sir because every day is a count so, no, sir so what, okay so day here uh, from the whatever the data set has been given here it is a feature but basically it will not work it will not it is not going to help you to define this okay it works as a feature but in the if you build a model you will be just excluding this this day because it it is not not going to help you in so we can any, we can exclude that from okay, feature sir, because it is on daily basis so not making a lot of sense to include it it will so not can, make can we drop that column see whenever you will be building you need to drop this column okay because with this column this column is not going to help you at all okay so they, you they, dropping they, this can, they can be dropped no sir yeah day you, you have to drop and then you need to build basically from the meta data whatever the data sets you have got four features are there but this is not going to help you at all so whenever you will be building you will be just excluding you will just delete this row and then you will be working So in the same sir, way, we are excluding it because it will not use in the calculation. That's why, sir. 
because it's not going to help you see how come day is going to help us it's not going to help sir, us right but this is... teacher can help us hmm no no just one second sir the question is uh, we have to analyze on the day wise on the daily basis so the day is most important but we will not use this day in in our calculation that's why we are ignoring yeah it. yeah you will not wow. use this day in the calculation in the building that model that okay, okay, yeah sir. but sir if overall we are asked that how many features are there so we will say three or four yeah you have four okay Okay, so it, is it clear? First and second, should I move to the next part? Yes, sir. The features were not included, no? Day is not included, right? That is conclusion. So I have no, no, in of... feature it is included, sir. But uh, while calculating model, it is not included. Okay. okay. So if you are just counting it, it, will, it, it, you can count it. But if, whenever you are building the model, you need to exclude this. Yeah. So would it be proper to say that day is a feature but not a predictor? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, it's a good way to say it's a feature, but it's not going to help you in any sense in in predicting the value, in predicting the outcome. So, so all the columns except the day column is output. the are the features, right? Uh, what what can can you repeat that? I didn't get you. Yeah, except the day, uh, all the other columns are the features. Is that is that right? The day day and except the day, all the other uh, columns they are the features. See, from the data set, this is also working as a feature, but it's not going to help you in in, in predict in building the model. That is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So the number of features, uh, uh, everyone said is four. So, gone for shopping, house housemaid, gone for walking, and state of emotion. So those are four are the features, right? No, no. This is the label. This is the outcome. So okay, after outcome. this four on basis of this four features. The date was this one, and then she went for, or he went for shopping, and then uh, housemate present, and then gone for walking, and then he or she is happy. Okay, so initially I thought there were three features, and day is like patient one, patient two, patient three. So like in the like uh, the diabetes or like uh, MRI data set like that. So initially I was thinking only the middle three uh, columns were the features. Yeah, but uh, so see the the basically the main important is the is three only. Okay, so nobody is going to ask for sure this number of uh, features for sure. Okay, if somebody is asking you, he'll be just telling you, okay, accept this one. So it will be three if we are expect uh, accept this excluding the day. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, sir, I have. Similar doubt yeah. for the, uh, the earlier case where we have the. A person walking is using pedometer to to uh, number of steps. Yeah. So here, here also we have a day, but um, uh, uh, yeah. Like so this just the example. If you yeah. have been given this this data set, you are not going to conclude anything for sure. I can bet like this this mm -hmm. data set is not helping you. This this is not going to uh, this is not help you at all to build any any model because this is not a Good. What do you guys say? The worst. Uh, this is a bad, very bad data set. But they are asking which model is uh, appropriate. Uh, which? Why this is asking? This is just to know whether you are able to understand the supervised, unsupervised, or or uh, and the uh, regression or classification. That's it. So from this data set, we are just asking you whether you are able to know where you will be using the regression problem, where you will be using classification problem. So here you can't use the classification, so it's a regression, right? Because the because the final output is what in, in some of a some form of continuous value, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. That's yeah, that's why it's a regression. He, he was not uh, asking you the features, anything. He was not asking you. He was just asking whether you'll be using some sort of which type of model, whether regression or or the or the class division. Here also the same steps. He was not asking the features and all. I was just telling you, okay. So there are three features that will help. That is going to help you in in building a model. Day is not going to help you at all in building the model. That's it. Okay. So I think so. It's like we'll move to the third third problem. And the third problem is consider the following table that contains data points and their their corresponding labels. Okay. So plot the data point. That is fine. Now you need to 
so which model is suitable to classify this this uh, okay it's already written okay <laughs> so the answer i just opened it so this was the plot so blue blue and green how will you uh, classify this how will you classify this because now you have the model the the input output output also has been given here so how will you classify which model you will be using for this supervised so class supervised classification okay this, this so is only at origin we are considering zero otherwise we are considering okay so okay tell me a straight line that will classify so which straight line will be able to classify this this model Do you think this 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 model will work? No. Why it is not working? Because it's this classifying. Why is not helping us? Everything aside, at one side. Yeah, it is not dividing the graph into parts where we can say that zero and zero is on origin is on okay. one side and the other three points are on one side. Okay. So with the help of the, the, because you you can see that you directly told. even if we are not able to visualize the plot how will you do that so we have discussed right loss function mm -hmm. with the help of loss function so if you have the this as a, a plane so what will the loss function will be getting loss value can somebody tell me calculate the loss function value and tell me what is the loss function you are getting so first of all we have to calculate the equation of this line the equation yeah why do you need to calculate the equation you just have to know how many miss this uh, this is function this straight line is misclassifying the values how One many of them okay are? so the indicator so stay so staying on here so you, uh, the line let's say there's a parallel line you can always draw a parallel line to the one that you have drawn now between 0 0 and 0 1 then it will become a Uh, classification through a uh, line, right? How 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 comes? This line you are saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now calculate the loss function value. So we need to know the equation for the line. So loss is zero because everything is being classified properly. Yeah, correct. So this is how the loss function then will help us, right? If you will plot this as a straight line, so you are not able to uh, classify, right? So you will be again having some because you have some misclassified value. So you will be getting some loss function, right? Some some numerical value, right? But if you are, uh, how do you calculate the misclassification? So without the yeah yeah, I, I can understand yeah, but but in the broader aspect, I'm just asking you. I'm not uh, going in in like I'm not uh, what you can say. i'm getting whatever you want to say but i'm, okay. I'm just plotting the straight line to just classify uh, okay. the blue and the brown line okay okay so this straight line is also not going to help us so this is what i was talking to if you have a different like this can work as a one model m1 this can work as m2 and this can work as m3 right yes sir yes right So which yeah. of them is a good best model? So, so yeah. to get that, how mm -hmm. generally we get that? To cal by calculating loss function, and with the help of loss function, we were able to say that. And here also we are able to say that because if you calculate the loss function, so in the loss function you will just classify that this this all is a one class class, and this has a one class. And with the help of M two, this is a one class, this is the other class. So if you are able to with the help of M two, you can see that the loss function will be minimized. the loss function will be getting because you are not able to miss, miss you are not misclassifying any of the any of the data point right so the 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 loss value will be zero right but again right. for this you are misclassifying one uh, three data points and, and three data points you are misclassifying there also you are, you are misclassifying one data point right so you 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 have the some different loss function value but for the m2 you have got the zero as a loss function value that's why it, it is one of the Uh, what do you can say the out of this three this is the better model right uh, sir a uh, one small question here like sir, uh, you know, it, sir, can you please explain it again uh, sir okay yeah here the color representation is here so we are able to clearly classify using the lines but if the color representations are not there 
so how will we uh, calculate from mathematically and understand this is the uh, classification like loss function is zero and we are able to classify the ha uh, ha correct then at that point will be needing what will be needing a plane okay so with the help of data point will be needing so it will start with so the ml model will start making a model ml model will start calculating the plane so plane will be having some what is some equation right x1 plus b y1 plus c z something like that right so this this is a plane okay so this will start taking some so many number of planes and with the help of because what is what is our optimization problem optimization problem is to minimize the loss we have to minimize the loss right so it will start taking so many different planes and with the help of loss function wherever the loss is minimum it will be telling you salis potty uh -huh. so on the basis of minimum uh, minimizing the loss function will be ending up getting a plane right at in the end it will get a one plane where the loss function is minimum and then it will tell you okay this is the best model that i have found for you okay hmm. okay got it hmm any problem in this okay so somebody was asking to repeat that so i'll just tell you see you have this type can of problem where can you yeah. find loss uh, loss in this case yes sir okay i'll i'll find that so should i repeat that or or is it clear now so let's find loss only. find the loss okay. sir then i can able to understand little bit okay so okay i'll just go in the end i guess the loss is also calculated so, yeah so you can see somebody has so here the 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 color was been given so it was not so we have not calculated but here also it calculated so this is the yellow line okay so this is a yellow line on the basis of the data set it has calculated one yellow line and again one other yellow so one what that yellow line was doing first this was uh, dividing the class into two classes right so this is the red this is the red as a class one and this is as, as the other class but you can see that here it was misclassifying one color right so if this mis this hyperplane or this plane if this is misclassifying how many it is misclassifying one it is misclassifying from the data given right yes sir okay sir so how are considering this that this is misclassifying because non color see this straight line i it's got and this value. straight line this straight line should classify the data point okay so i am having four data points and the four data oh. points are here 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 okay mm -hmm. i have got one set i will be needing so if an in if an statement i i should be needing a border uh, value so this is the border plane okay and from that border plane i should be able to classify class 1 and class 2 right if mm -hmm. i am getting this as a border plane but this is not classifying our all value this is classifying this as a one class one so all the data points coming here is class one and all the data coming here is class two but this is not classifying this is misclassifying our red uh, uh, red point right so how many it is misclassifying it is misclassifying only one data point right and so it is classifying can we take it other way also that it is misclassifying three and classifying one you can say that also but mm -hmm. fine but here we are we oh, already have the table we can able to identify no sir One yeah, from the outside and white tilde. There What is one? only one misclass loss. No, means my point was why we are considering that this point is like misclassifying only one. Maybe we can consider the blue one. Oh, you can say no. that. Yes, sir. Look at the table. No. Oh, See yeah. white and white tilde. There is only one mismatch. Zero and one. The uh -huh. others are same. So there is only one loss. Yeah, yeah. in that way. See. you can say see if you have plotted this plot has been plotted right and if you are classifying this as a class 1 and this as a different class this is a blue class and this is a red class okay because you have one mis class even okay. with the help of see if you have got the if you are not getting the value exact plane equation then you can classify you can say whatever you were saying you, you uh, can we consider this as a three mistake or four three mistake you are saying right so you can yeah. consider that also if you don't have the exact plane equation if you have the mm -hmm. exact plane equation then you can put and then classify right so here he has done the same steps so he has calculated the value and then you can see that this classifying this point 00 as also as 1 but that is incorrect right 
So this mm-hmm. is what I was saying. It has cla- misclassified one data point, and if mm-hmm. this is misclassifying one data point, that means the error I'm getting one upon four, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. In the similar way, if I'm a, if, so the, the squared loss is calculated. So so who was asking one upon four is the squared loss because you are getting here also the misclassification. So you just need to count the misclassified value and then divide it with the number of data points. So you have only one misclassified value that is one. And one upon four is zero point two five is the squared error. Okay. Mm-hmm. So is this linear model good enough or not? No. 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 Because you can get a model, you can get a better model where you can minimize the loss, right? And here you have got the model. So okay. So you can get a model like you can plot it here, and then you can just skip this from zero point five to zero, not zero minus zero point, and you'll be getting a good model. You'll be getting a model where the loss is. The min- you have just minimized the squared uh, error, right? Is this clear till now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll be moving to the next part, and that part you should be able to understand. Okay. So this is a plot. Look at the plot below and answer the following question. So which model you'll be using for this? This is a regression problem, so that should be clear for everyone. Because you need to predict the value, exact value. You you are not classifying anything. So this is a problem. This that is a regression problem. Okay, is this clear? Yes, sir. So uh, regression is basically line fitting. Yeah, curve fitting. Okay, curve fitting. A uh, line fitting curve, whatever you want to say, you can say that. Okay, this is a regression problem, right? So you have been given the equation for this zero. So you have this four data points. I, I you have this four data points. Okay. Sir, I- Let me continue here. Yeah. Like in the beginning, yeah. we find we are trying to classify them, and in order to classify that into two category, uh, we just wanted the uh, calculate the loss function. So using loss function, we wanted to classify. But again, you are saying uh, to reach the classify uh, classification criteria, we are using regression from regression function. So uh, is it like uh, contradicting uh, both the things in the beginning and till till this thing? No, no, I didn't get like in the problem. Yeah, in the beginning there were four points like blue three and the red ones. Uh huh. Uh, so we wanted to classify that in in such a manner so that log using the loss function, where the loss function is minimum, so we can classify. Okay, this is one one area blue area, or this is another area the red area, right? Huh. Huh. Correct. That is fine. Classification technique there. So okay. uh, this is a classification. This is a classification. Okay. So in order to classify that, we are using the loss function. Yeah. So every time you will be using loss function, whether so it's a be it a, a regression or a classification. Okay. So this is the continuation of that, right? Again, you are telling me we we use. Yeah. This is a different question. This is a different question. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, so now you have this four line. point. Yeah. So okay. Uh, so first. Tell me the question. Uh, yeah, sir, I I was asking, looking at this question. So, are we are having four points, which are blue dots, and uh, this uh, orange line is our model, and we have yeah. So you have four points A, B, C, D. You have two okay. model, and the model is one is green and one is uh, saffron or orange, whatever you want to say. So uh, now tell me which of the two is the best one? Okay. Out of these two, which one is better? Or best, whatever you want to say. Again, and how will you do that? So, for this, if somebody is saying directly, how will how how which which method is the best? Like, uh, which approach you will be going? So basically, you'll we are using. going to find the strength of each of them and then finding the adding square mean square. Uh, huh. This. So what you'll be doing? You'll be calculating the squared. So you just have to mm-hmm. minimize the error, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you have to do? You have to minimize the squared error. So okay. That is what loss function you are telling him. That square, error, uh, that square error you are telling that is related to loss function, right? Ha, huh. yeah, that is loss function itself. So you need to minimize. So what is the optimization problem? What we have to optimize? You have to minimize the loss function, right? To get the good model out of these two. So whichever the function, whichever the model, this is the M1 model and this is the M2 model. Whichever, which of Whoever is having the minimum loss function, loss value, will be the better out of two, right? Yes, sir. Green okay. answer. Uh, I don't know what what is the value you are getting. What is the loss function? See, 
for the green one i don't think so the green i guess the see green one a is lying on the point that is fine for a it would be zero but again you need to calculate the distance from c and then from d and then b b is very di di distance from equation of straight line we are given and then this point we are given so we have to find the perpendicular distance between them oh, right? okay. you have to calculate the yeah so what you will be doing just put the value of all the x Substitute and y for all the y values in the equation sir and we have so to find it ha you will be getting so some y label label for what then no label Data points will be given. No label here would be Y, right? Whatever be the Y. Yeah, yeah. Y would be the label. So, uh, but the X, uh, X and Y value is uh, okay. Okay. So vector is uh, okay. Yeah, I got it, sir. Calculate the perpendicular distance and then f x i minus x i y. Square. So, yeah. so one yeah. is small doubt. Yeah. So this yeah. is one dimensional data. Uh, the one dimensional or two dimensional? I think it's one. It's dimensional. One dimension. See, x is yeah. input, y is output, right? Yeah. So x your x dimension. is a feature, right? And y you'll be getting. So here the model is what you have got the model, but for each data point you have right, you have label and the feature also. Like for example this. You have two as a feature and four as a more uh, like a label or the output, right? Similarly, for all the data points, you have everything. You have the straight line, and this is the linear basic linear regression problem. And you have you have been given the straight line also. You will you have the y, so the model y value is also been given. So you just need to put the x, get the y, and see. Or even if you don't want to do that, you can just calculate the distance, and then you are uh, you just need to calculate the distance and see. For which of the straight line the loss is maximum and sorry minimum and that is a good model out of this two. Uh, so that way the distance and all it will go lengthy. So what the other way you said that we will be substituting the y uh, x ah, value. Ah, you do yeah that 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 way also you can do that. So which way? Secondly, what is the second way? What is the? What did you say? What we have to substitute like x and y? So see. For this two comma four, yes, two comma four. Yes, one sir. is x y you have right, so you can just make a table x and y right, x and mm -hmm. y. So the starting value you have already right. Mm -hmm. So this is given right, x and then y, okay. And this you can write as y tilde. So mm -hmm. x has been given for each of the value for all the four value you have how many data points? X four yes. data points you have a b c d mm -hmm. right. Yes, Understood. A you can write this as uh, whatever you want, like one comma two one, and yeah. then the output is also been given. Similarly, you can calculate the y tilde because the equation has been given, right? From mm -hmm. there you can calculate the y tilde, and then you can and calculate the squared mean error, error, right? Yeah. Y tilde minus y, 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 y. y. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Similarly, you can calculate, and then the, you can check for which of the two equation the loss is minimum, and then you can say okay, out of this m one and m two. M1 mm -hmm. or M2, whatever you have calculated for the mean, minimum loss value is the good out of the two. Yes. Okay. So this you can calculate. Sir, can, can you I calculate say? that? Yeah. Sir, we need to. Uh, sum up all the perpendicular distance of the data point uh, from the data point to that line. Or we need to uh, sum up f x i minus x. See. Yeah. Okay. So here also he has done the same step. What he has done, he has just calculated y. So this is m one. This is the model m one. This is the m two model, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you have. You have M1 model and you have M2 model also, right? So you'll be having this as a y tilde one for the M1 model and y tilde two for M2 model, right? Correct. Similarly, you have the y value for both the function. You have the x for all the data points. Okay, you can calculate all the steps. You can calculate all the value, lambda one, lambda two, right? Each every step, everything you can calculate, right? Yes. You can calculate whatever the lambda. If you are getting lambda till lambda one, 
you can calculate lambda 1 minus 2 ka whole square similarly you can calculate for all the four values and divide four to get the loss function value right or the squared error mean squared error right yes <coughs> similarly you can get for the m2 model also and then you can compare which is having the minimum value and that is the good model out of this two right sir this for the, the green one i got uh, 12.125 okay but uh, the red i have to calculate sir <laughs> okay so you can calculate for this i guess this should be by looking by looking first of all you can't say but if you have to guess i guess the orange one should be the answer but i don't know so like you have to calculate that so just a, a general inquiry wouldn't the saffron one be a better line considering the green one is perfectly fitting one point and in doing so it is distancing itself from other points and uh, yeah see, so like, this is how i also told but yes. by looking you can't say i yes. also told the saffron should be uh, i guess uh, having the le less uh, like value yes. compared to the green one because the b is very far from that uh, yes. uh, green one that can be the one is that but you need to calculate like the, the, the i think the green one 11.62 11.62 yeah and this one uh, 12.43 okay so the green one is the the, the the good one but see uh, we have so why visualizing you can't say directly but yeah okay so we'll move forward so this this i told you how will you see and how will you check that so this is done now the the fifth, fifth problem is the multi-class classifier okay so the table below so the original label yeah was someone asking anything okay so i'll move forward so this is the last problem okay so this is the last no, second last i guess the problem so here the table below shows the original label and the predicted label so okay of the some multi class classifier problem, compute the squared loss and the zero and loss, which loss function seem to be a good one. Okay, so this is the label. Okay, this is a ground to uh, see. Sometimes for the label, you generally say the ground truth also. Okay, the output, ground truth, or label, everything is same. Okay, so this is a multi class classifier, and the class the classes are how many? Four classes are there. One, two, three, four. All the four classes are there. And this is a predicted one. This is the you have the model sum m, and this is the predicted value. Okay, and this is the squared distance, and this is the zero one loss. Zero one loss, you know, right? What is zero one loss? If the values are same, it will be zero. If they are different, it will be. If the value is yeah. zero, zero. If greater than zero, it is one. It's not greater than zero. Like if, if this is misclassifying, then then it should be one. Ah, okay. Okay, and if this uh, classifying correctly, then it should be zero, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you need to. You are able to know, right? Zero one loss. Zero one loss is nothing. If you are classifying. So if it is classifying correctly, then it should be one. No, no it should be zero because it's classifying correctly. That, that so so no, why we are doing no, just no, counting no. the misclassified value and then divided with the number of uh, data points, right? So if that is classifying correctly, then the loss function should be zero, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm writing zero. And if this is misclassifying, then it's one. Now you need to tell me which of the two should be a good one. Which of the two is that? So I'm using two loss function, right? This is the loss function one, and this is the loss function two. Which loss function should be working fine for this condition? Uh, assuming that the label or the ground truth is a continuous variable, then the this is not a continuous variable. This this is a classifying problem. 
ये क्लासिफिकेशन प्रॉब्लम See the value seems to be continuous one, two, three, four, but this is not a value. This is a class one, class two, class three, class four. So you can assume it is an apple, banana, or some pomegranate, and orange. So zero one would be a better one. Why can't square distance be a better one? Like for some cases, do you think this 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 can work as a good one? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, what? Why not? Oh, uh, what is the reason? So, if you are giving it it uh, a lot, if you see as a lot, yeah. it's coming out to be only two. So, out so, of see, this can also work sometimes, very, very rarely. But what's the reason? Like, can somebody tell me why? So out how... of out of the ten data, it is. Uh -huh. uh, The error is only two. It means that eighty percent is accuracy. In that term, we can say that. Okay. Sorry, no, no. That that's no not the okay. So that can be uh, th that's not the correct interpretation for this. Uh, can some giving clear, yeah. clear classification? Sometimes it is four. Sometimes it is nine. Sometimes it's zero. So it doesn't give a clear classifying or uh, the classified elements. So maybe zero yeah. one, which is. Giving a clear classification. Zero uh, one is. I am. I am agreeing for that. Zero one is the good one for this case. Okay. So here actually is quite. If you are taking, uh, shall I shall I try to answer sir? So here we have two error. As you say, two loss functions squared error, squared difference. So mean squared error. If you take only for this classification, that's what they have done that. No sir. So we are getting two two as the Uh, mean squared error. So uh, whereas for the zero one, we are getting only point three six, right? Mm, so uh, what I no. think is that uh, suppose we have got the ground truth as one and the predicted as two. Here the uh, there is square difference of one, and yeah. should the ground label be one and the predicted should be uh, three, mm -hmm. then the square difference should be four. Yeah, correct. In either case, the predicted is just as wrong. But because you are assigning numerical ranking, like you are taking nominal value one, two, three, four, or and making it numerical, like that, like the difference actually represents a certain value that is more different. We are having an issue. Like uh, one, is, one versus two is just as wrong as one versus four. But the square differences will give you that one versus four is more wrong than one versus two. Yeah, yeah, super. Yeah, totally correct. So, so whatever he has told is like totally correct. He this can also work as a as a fine one. Okay, how when? Oh. <coughs> so, sir, but, sir, we have to calculate the loss. No, sir, first we are not calculating the loss at all. So, see, square distance can also work uh, as a nice loss function. How he told it very correctly. Because if if your ground truth or the label is one, and if the predictor the your model is predicting one, then that is fine. You are getting the square root of zero. But if if sometimes if your label is one, like for here, like your label is one, and the your model is predicting four, maybe for some cases it can predict two also. But for both the cases, zero one loss will give you okay. This has not classified. Okay, for one if this is one and your model is classifying four or two. Your zero one loss will tell directly. Okay, this is not classifying. Okay, fine. But your square error distance will tell you. Okay, this one is very far from four, so that's why nine is added for this cases. But for this case, it's one only. So this, if this square distance is very less, then you can say that this is a uh, even if not classifying correctly, but at least the whatever the ground truth was there and the predicted was very much closer to that, right? Sir, we have to catch. Sir, 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 how are, come it is? Sir, we are not. Sir, you are not. You are not doing any uh, loss function calculation at all, sir. Heuristically, we are doing. Sir, so what I am saying is, we will have to calculate the loss function average loss. Sir, we are not doing that at all. We are just going by heuristics, sir, like comparing one to four, one to two, and all those things. Where are we calculating the the average error, sir? Actually, we have to calculate, right? Yeah, we have no. I was just telling you that when the square distance can also work 
fine for this cases because most of the time you will see for the classifying uh, classification problem for multi class or maybe for binary classification for binary classification there is no doubt you will be using zero one loss right for the multi class classifier this will work fine but this can help you also to get the idea of the model when you will be building the model you can calculate this square distance to get an idea that i told you like if you are very far like whatever your ground truth and the predicted value will be very far then you will be getting a very large square distance loss value right but for each and every like see i'm just giving you this is the prediction uh, sir, model m1 sir sir we, we cannot be taking only one data point sir, for square distance we have to take all and then take the average right yeah yeah you are correct see and for this data point i have some 10 to 15 data points right so i'll i'll just give you this this is a model m1 this is the m1 and i have built a one more model like for example this is one this is predicting one and this is predicting okay this is fine this is predicting uh two it was there it's predicting four that is fine for three it is predicting one that is also fine for four for four for same okay zero one it is predicting one for two okay but this will be coming as a misclassified by but our value square distance would be what the square distance would be one right in spite of four i'll be getting one right similarly here two three here also if i'm four this is classified as three here also i'll be getting one right and again for same one 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 your this zero one loss the value would be you will be getting 36% as misclassified right but the square error here you are getting two but if you will count this as if you will count for this case for my model m2 in spite of model m1 you will be getting how much 4 plus 4 as 8 plus 1 plus 1 10 so, so 10 upon 1 right so it will be very less so now out of m1 and m2 you can say m2 is a better model right so even for both the cases zero one loss was same but now you can say m2 is a better model because the square distance was less that means what that means our model was very much predicting bad like Yes, so, sir. How do we compare two and thirty? The answers here for two and thirty-six percent. And so can you please explain how it is twenty-two? Sir, can we? So how are how are we comparing these two, sir? Two and thirty-six percent. Two and thirty-six percent. I am not comparing two and thirty-six percent. I am comparing two and this ten upon eleven. No, no, that's okay, sir. But right now, uh, which of these two? How to how to find out the best of these two? The better of these two? See, Let's this see. is calculated for M one, and this is also calculated for M one only. And for M two, mm. for new mm. model that I have told you, M two for M two, the this is same thirty six percent itself because it has classified correctly. So you can check that this is classified correctly. So wherever there is a misclassification, I ju I just uh, what I did, I just did. the misclassified is very much closer to the original value okay whenever for my model 2 so the misclassified value is very much closer so it should classify as 2 i am classifying it as a 3 like for here <clears throat> it was earlier it was classifying as 4 but for now model new newer model it was classifying as 2 right so now the value has came closer to the 1 right so that's why the probability value the square distance value i am getting very less compared to this one so out of if you are comparing this two model then this is a better one so whatever i build later is it clear can you please explain me how it is 22 okay so this is 22 that's this wrong. is 4 499 how is it no that's wrong that's wrong ah, okay that's the typo or this is a typo error this ah type ah that's what okay okay sir this is a typo this should be 26 Yes, sir. Now it's clear, sir. Basically, sir, what we want to uh, understand from here is by zero one, we are just getting either it is uh, mis, either it is classifying or misclassifying, right? Uh, by zero one loss. But in square difference, we also understanding that how much uh, close. How closer was. you? Yeah. How close it was the value, yeah. whatever it has misclassified. How close it was to the ground truth. Hmm. So that hmm. uh, in that case, it will help us further if we want to understand. Exactly. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so the yeah. square distance is helping in that way. Yes, sir. Got it. Is it clear? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Can you repeat the last line? Okay. So the last line was: see, zero one loss is just helping you 
to get the model where it is misclassifying or classifying correctly or not okay but square distance is helping you to get an idea the misclassified value how close it was to the label the original value okay okay so if like i gave you an example where you are getting the loss zero one loss as same but you can get a different ml like a uh, model where the squared less would be minimum so you need to choose a better it's good to go with the uh, where the square distance is minimum that means the misclassified value is very much closer to the original value basically in square difference we are quantifying uh, as how much we are closer correct so yeah how close you are to the original value okay is that fine yes yes, yes sir okay so I'll, I'll i'll be just uh, compiling the session i'll not discuss this one maybe i'll discuss in the next session but yeah so but i'll upload this one so if you have doubt till this question you can ask me so this last problem i'll be discussing in the last, next session sir where you are going to upload this one uh, this i'll be uploading so you'll be having a file on the portal itself so maybe I'll, I'll just create one more folder and then upload all the all the slides there sir, along with the ppt sir i mean the, you have yeah to i'll upload see. all the ppt so i have to uh, one ppt that is the lecture notes ppt and then the other is the short notes that i have created for the last term that i'll upload okay. and then this one this is the solve with us so this also sure, I'll upload. and the fourth thing is the solution for the practice assignment so where, where to access this sir it will be in which folder uh, I'll be, uh, so you, you can see that okay so there will be one more folder i'll, I'll just show you supplementary content uh, yeah supplementary content so i'll be uploading it here so there will be a, a supplementary content you can just check it there so it will be uploaded tomorrow uh, sir please upload the ppt okay, week sir, two also sir. okay yeah i'll upload it for the week two also so shall uh, we leave so last question the one that we have discussed uh -huh. if the classification was not one two three four but if it was across dimensions like if it was say one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero and zero 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 one as zero, opposed zero, to what 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 can you repeat that so so the first one like one will be one comma zero 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 uh, one zero no 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 sir as in, in vector human as in a vector Okay, so vector. you are saying this value. So this is the ground truth. This would be in the only one vector. This can be in the one vector only. Like uh, it can be in the only one dimension. Yes, sir. So there are four dimensions. So there are there's like an x, y, z, and p. Four dimensions, uh -huh. and each of these, like one, is one comma zero zero zero. Okay. And two is zero comma one zero zero. Okay, and three is this zero. is what you are saying. This is what this is a label. This, yeah, this is this is the label for one. Like the ground, the ground, ground truth one has got this label now. Ground this should be some classified value, classified. So this can be one class, class one. This is class yes. two. So this I, like you have a feature on the basis of that feature you have classified this as an apple or this as an orange or this as a banana or this as a pomegranate. Okay, this can't be a, this type of value. This is just a label. That means you are just classifying. This can be some disease. This can be some some classified value. No nominal variable, right, sir? Yeah, this can. Yeah, you are correct. This can't be this this type of value. So this is a label, right? This is a classified value. That means it should be some something like like in the earlier example I was uh, we were dealing with this, right? So this was one classifier, the multi class. Uh, so here it was a three class like what you can say that the, the multi-class classifier with the three classifier value this was yes. happy neutral and anger so similarly here you have one two three four okay did you get the point yes yes so i cannot use the vector no, you can't use that yeah you can't use that yeah clear completely clear okay so is it fine uh can we close this session now Sir, mm -hmm. sir, just wait on this fourth problem. Uh, okay. I mean, some students said that they are getting error as 11 point or 12 point something. Okay. Um, I haven't calculated. 
but uh, yeah so what is your value what, what you were getting not error that is the loss 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 sorry i'm, I'm yeah that's the loss, loss or error that both are fine yeah yeah loss but i'm not getting close to that value so how much you're getting i'm getting uh, 6 by 4 6 by 4 you are getting uh, what is the value okay so what is the what is the value of I mean what is the points coordinate points we have to we have to print that sir see coordinate is what one coordinate is what one comma two one the comma second two coordinate four, is four comma three two comma four comma three. B is four comma three yeah C is and two then you are having four five comma five, five okay comma five yeah fine and now you have the <clears throat> predicted five. value as what x plus one so you have the predicted value as what one plus two so you have predicted three. value as three. three here also five. here you have five and then six. six. Okay, if you are calculating the difference of these two, we are getting one plus one plus the what you are getting. Sorry, yeah, two ka whole square. This is getting your so four. That will be zero, right? Zero. This is zero. Ah, zero. Here you are getting one. Here one. you are getting four. Four. And then and you are getting one. 10. So again six one. upon four is correct. Yeah, one point five, right? Yeah. Okay. So really you can calculate for this also. How you did this? Uh -huh. Sir, can you explain how you did this? Huh. So this C. You why is the predicted value? Equation. Oh, sorry, sir. Go ahead. Okay. So this this you can see that this is the data point. So the first data point is how much? One and the y is what? The single square. X. So y second. and this is y tilde. This is the predicted value. Um, for second also we have to calculate so point One, two, four, so and then you have four, three, and then five, uh, five. The so predicted value is what? X plus one. X plus one is you are getting two, and here you are getting three, and here five and six. If you will calculate the difference and do the square, so two minus one car square is one, and then you are getting how much? Sorry, here is zero, and then one. And then two ka whole square and then one ka whole square. I divide it with the four because you have to calculate the mean of the square. Area. So you are getting six upon four. Right? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Similarly, okay. we'll do it for the second equation. Yeah, similarly, you can do for the saffron one and then uh, whichever is the minimum will be the better one. Thank you, sir. Take care. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, anyone else is having any doubt? Uh, okay. So can we close that? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, sir. Sir, what is the overlap? What? With MLF and BDM. Okay, uh, that yes, I'll, I'll, I'll 